Hi, this presentation is going to walk through when to use web form composite elements versus when to use web form tables. My name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I am a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. When should you think about using composites versus tables? Composites and tables allow you to collect rich, organized, and structured data. Rich, organized, and structured data applies to you know, grouping related data in one place, kind of like a table in a database, which is where there's a relationship between tables, but also visually organizing information to the end user when they're filling out a form. Um, that they know the information's related and they can see that and they can be like, oh, I'm entering in my address, for example. We'll get to addresses in a second. And, and also just to create a reusable set of elements. So an address is a great example of a reusable set of elements. It's gonna be the same on all your forms. You're gonna to wanna to have the same user experience on all your forms. And we'll start with composite elements. So what are composite elements? They're, composite elements are multiple inputs working together. And the examples of built-in composite elements in the web form module are just, you know, an address, a name where you're getting a title, first name, last name, middle, suffix, and degree. And even a link is a composite element because you're getting a title and URL. And then there's a contact example in the web form module where that's really name and address combined. You're getting someone's name, company, email, phone, and the et cetera really is their address. And you can, you know, I'll show you how you can build your own composites in a little bit. But here's a built-in composite element. So we're just looking at a basic address and it's just, you can pick and choose which elements are visible and what the labels are. More importantly, I want to show you the front end and what it looks like. And it's just a stack of, you know, inputs and you can pick in the state. And now there's multiple and that's allowing you to enter multiple addresses at that moment. And below, I wanted to include the address module to show you that the address module when installed gives you this very rich composite element where you're collecting locale specific addresses. So whatever country someone selects, you're gonna get an address that's perfectly formatted for that country. Very powerful feature from the address module. Um, site builders can create custom composites. This demo takes a little bit of a time, but we're gonna go in and say, I want a custom composite. You're gonna enter the title, just say it's a custom composite, but then you're gonna enter in the individual elements. So in this case, I'm gonna copy that kind of very simple first name, last name pattern, where I'm gonna say, let's do first name, and here you have a bunch of inputs available to, you know, elements inputs available to select from. Um, just doing text fields for first name and last name. You have to enter in the machine name, select the element, and a title. Everything else is optional. You can even enter custom properties. And then we're going to go in and do gender, which is a select menu. And, you know, for select menus, you're going to be required to select the options you want. And these are from the reusable sets of options. You can go in, get gender. And let's see what's next. Oh, I think we want to make these required. We do that right here. And go in, scroll down. And visually we can make it look required and we hit save and let's look what we got. We have a multiple composite element that we completely customize what the elements are and we can add or remove rows as needed. And you have full control of it. There is the web form composite tools module which will allow you to create a reusable custom composite that you could have on any form you want in the same element. Let's move on. This, if you want even more functionality, developers can create custom composites in code. There is a web form example composite module. This is the web form example composite element and it shows you that you need a template and basically in code you're saying what the elements are and in this case I'm just doing first and last name that are text fields but you can imagine building out a whole set of the elements that you would need for this composite. If you wanted to have your organization's user profile, the type of information you want to collect for every user across every form be consistent, you could create a composite element for that. And the benefits to using a composite element is they're simple to understand, they're easy to reuse, and they support multiple sets of values automatically. You say, I want multiple composites, there's a UI for that. There's some limitations. Um, you have the default presentation, which is good, which is a grid, um, but the layout is limited. One element per cell. Um, you don't get a lot of, you can fine tune the rows a little bit, but you can't control the color of the table or anything like that. It's gonna automatically generate that for you. And 
Complex elements are not always supported. For example, you can't nest a composite element in another composite element. And even nested multiple values are not supported. A very simple example of that is you can't really have checkboxes inside a composite element. The back end database doesn't support that level of data. So that's why I want to talk about tables and how do you build tables. Well, tables are used to lay out information in rows and columns with individual elements placed in cells. So it's important to say tables is a system to lay out information. That's all it does. It's a container and you're putting inputs and elements in cells. Um, each cell contains individual elements. Cells can contain any element markup. There's no limitation there. Headers, rows, and cells are totally customizable. You can set custom styles, properties, whatever you want. I'm going to just demo it. It takes a little while, but I felt the demo was good because this is a new feature. and I wanted to walk people through it, so I'm going to do table demo. I'm going to add an element. I'm going to add a table element right here. I'm going to call this people. I'm going to add two more rows to the header. And we're going to do first name, last name, gender. You can add custom attributes to the table header. You can enable sticky headers. We're not going to build a large table, so we don't need it. I recommend leaving this feature on, and you'll see it kicking in, the automatic prefixing and incrementing of table rows and elements. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to add a row. And I'm just going to fix the grammar here and say people. Oh, sorry, not people, person. And I'm even going to change the machine name. And it's pulling this from the table, but let's, you know, oh, caught that typo before it went through. Now I'm going to add, so we have a row, I'm going to add the elements. And because I set the header, I'm going to want a first name. And you'll see that this is automatically prefixed with the table row, first name 01. But what I'm going to want to do is here, I'm going to want to add a one so that I know exactly where the user has entered the information. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to add another text field. I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to add a one. I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to hit add. And we're going to do a select menu to do gender. Select gender, and I'm going to go and select the options. I'm going to fix the title. I'm adding the one to the title so that it'll automatically be incremented, and you'll see that kick in in a second. I'm going to hit save, and let's look at this. So we have, I just want to say, a table with a row with first name, last name, and gender. And if we view it, you have to, this is the problem here. We're getting a duplicate first name because we have a header. These are individual elements, and by default, individual elements titles are visible. This is something you could decide on how you want to do it. In this case, I think I want to hide these labels, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And you know, most people who build forms are familiar with it. And you can see this is a lot of work. I'm going in and saying, okay, the first one, I'm going to set it to invisible. Um, this is a great moment to show the source mode, which if you're doing advanced tables, you're going to want to know how it works underneath. And all I'm doing, just to be clear, I'm looking at the markup behind this table and I'm saying, well, I want to copy this title display property visible. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go back. And now I have what I want as the first row. Um, I'm going to go back to build. Oh, and I made one mistake here. I kind of want to make these required. It's not a big deal. Okay. Now that they're required, what I'm going to do is start adding rows. If I hit add row, it's going to create person two because it's incrementing. It's copying the first row. It's incrementing the value up. I have this checked. When this is checked, it's not just going to create a table row. It's going to copy every single element going down the entire row into the next row. Boom. We have a second row. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to click, by the way, these two add buttons are a little confusing, but it's because we're on a small screen. It would say add element and add tape, add row. I'm going to hit save. Boom. We have three rows and let's look at it. We're going to hit view. We 
We have very similar to the composite, but we can't, it's not dynamic, so we can't add and remove elements. We have to specify each row. Um, but I'll go over to the test tab and it'll auto populate it. I'm going to hit submit. And something that is new to tables and very important is I'm going to go in here and let's look at it. Each individual element gets its own column when you're looking at the data. When you export it to a spreadsheet, you're going to get exactly this. It's really powerful because it makes your life easier because you have each individual data point. Basically, you're specifying every single piece of data you're collecting in that table. Um, I click view and just show you that you get, you know, then you get this nice table view that you can, I mean, it'll even work in the PDF. Boom. Um, that's a pretty broad demo of the table functionality. And let's, let's talk about it a little bit more. So this is important. This is like a takeaway from the web form module in general. With great power comes great responsibility. Tables are incredibly flexible, but you need to take responsibility for that and know what you're doing. In a lot of cases with the web form module, this is a good rule of thumb. Know what you're doing. Um, also, just experiment. I hate to say, that's how you learn. That's why I demoed it, to make people feel comfortable with experimenting with this. So when to use a table? It, when you require a whole lot of flexibility. Um, when you're mixing HTML markup with elements, I'm, I mean, you can do anything. You can insert any element into a table cell. And if you're collecting complex information, you can do that in the table. Uh, you could have had, I could have added a, a column called address and put in the entire composite address element. And if you're collecting multiple data points, it's a great way to get that data broken down into individual smaller pieces so that you know exactly what piece of data someone filled out. Um, some limitations. It just requires a lot of planning. Know what you need to build before you start it. Um, they can be difficult to maintain if it gets too complex and then people start changing the requirements of the table. Then you, you really need to go into that source mode and understand how that table is working. Keep in mind, the table you're building in the web form module is pretty much an HTML table. It's a table, a row, and a cell. Um, and tables are not reusable across multiple web forms. You can copy the markup from one web form to another. So you could have a snippet to work with, but they're not going to be shared. You can't have one table that's reused on 20 forms. Um, and so when to use composites, when to use tables. Composites are easier to use, and tables are more flexible. That's the big difference. They're just easier. They work out of the box, but you get a huge amount of functionality with tables. So my recommendation is always start with a composite. When you're planning, try to see if you can get a composite element to meet your requirements. And if you have really complex requirements, use a table. It'll, you can do anything. Um, that's it for now. You can learn more about me at jrockwitz.com. I'm jrockwitz on Drupal.org. And thanks for watching and listening.